This is Ms. Johnson. I'm going to try to do a little tutorial on vMix. vMix is represented here at the bottom with the nine squares. That's the program that we use in the studio. So if I open vMix, it always goes to this blank template. To get to what we need for announcements, you're going to go up here to open. And then that'll bring up this screen right in here. You'll see in the middle announcements, vMix presets. That's what you need to click on in order to open um, the list of things we did last. And then you're going to get to this box where you hit open again. Notice the camera that we're using actually says blank up here. That is because this is a program that allows you to add um, a background. And so that's what we've done. The actual camera is way back here under Pro Capture. That's the name of the actual camera. We generally have, um, let me, I wasn't going to do this right now, but let me fix it. If you'll notice the green screen is being really um, odd right now where the, the top of the table looks like part of the background. I'm going to change that by going down here to Pro Capture. Double click on the Pro Capture one and it brings this up. Color key is what is called when you use a green screen. So I'm going to click on color key. And sometimes what I can do is change these pre presets right here to make it look better. So I'm going to click one. Well, that looks better. You can see how it's it shows through. Let's show what two looks like. See, two is almost, it's picking up the reflection of the green background here. That's why it looks all pixelated. Three is probably going to be worse. It goes away completely. So we're going to stick to one. Sometimes anti-aliasing will change it too. Sometimes that'll clean it up or not. There's also possibility to bring this. Sometimes you can change some of the other ones. Usually we're able to get what we want by just hitting one of these to clean it up. So now it doesn't look too bad. I see a little bit of branches here, but it's not too bad. We actually run it from up here. Um, the way that we run our normal program is that we always put the announcement um, date up in front of whoever's talking before we ever start the program. So to start a program, we're going to use this over here, which is our music. I'm going to click on that. Unplug this so you can hear it. Oh, maybe I can't. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to have you hear the music. Uh, maybe I can do it this way. Um, I'm going to click audio because we only want the audio to play. I don't want um, the black here because there's nothing on the screen to show up here. So if I hit audio, audio, and the three, only thing is going to play. So here, if I hit the three, once it's on audio, I'm going to reset the time to the beginning. Hit three and it should play. Hopefully you can hear it. I'm holding the um, speaker microphone up to it. And when we get to a certain point, usually right around here, we point to the person to start talking so that they say, welcome to WMS announcements. This is Monday, January 25th, 2021. And then they say something. So they are able to say that first part over the tail end of the music. So once again, I have that started. I'm going to take the three off. We always bring it up on the three. There is a reason behind that. We bring titles up on the one. The titles that come from the other computer, if we use them, come up on the two. So we never want to hit the two because that disengages the other computer. Our sound then is on three, and that gives four as an option. So what these do down here is allow us to bring things up on the screen in addition to the announcer. So I've got on audio, I hit the three and that starts it playing. I then go down here and hit record, hit record in the middle. That's when it actually starts recording. I'm listening to the music. It starts to go past the peak. I point WMS announcements, Monday, January 25th. And you can see how that works. Continues to play until you hit record at the end. And then this pops up to hit, to stop the recording. So that's generally how we'll start the announcements on a given day. Um, to take um, the 
title off, you can remove it by hitting the one. It, it's like a toggle switch on and then off, on and then off. Do be extra careful doing this though, because if you go up here and you hit close, that will actually re delete your title. Let me show you down here with one that I don't care about. So if I were to bring this no tutoring title up here on the one, if I accidentally slip and instead of hitting the one, I hit close, it actually disappears completely. So I've lost that title. So if I wanted to get the title back, I then have to input it and that's kind of a pain. So you don't want to do that if you don't have to. All right, so that's one way of taking it off. Another way of taking it off, if you go directly into another title where I go from one title to the next, I can just hit the one again on the next title and it just changes to a new title. You do have to be careful about that though, because sometimes we don't want, we want the titles to go away for an announcement. We don't always have a title for every announcement. So just keep that in mind. You have to watch the script to tell. Now, I pulled this up somewhat by accident, but we pulled it up. That was added today during class. And we need to fix that because you can see this bottom doesn't work correctly. So that gets us into how to change the titles. To change the title, you right click on the title down here and go to Title Editor. When you bring up Title Editor, you have two things. You have headlines and you have description. Now, one of the things that's happened here is people have written this as a sentence as opposed to as a title. We generally do not put the articles like the here, and we also don't need to say eighth grade boys basketball team because we have that up here. So we're gonna delete all of this And we would start then lost to Zionsville West last night. And then what we want to put in is the score. Um, let me see if I can find this on here. Um, it was 41 to 38. Um, and usually we don't have to put the last night because we are only going to announce stuff from the following day. So lost to Zionsville West, and I've got the time. I might put a comma there, and I might add in a student that we're highlighting, and I might say Will and Nevin, and there's a, a reason I'm not using their last name here, and that is just because we don't have room for it. Ne Nevin, um, um, 10 points each. Okay. Now, if you'll notice right here, it's gone too long. So I either have to remove parts of this to make it work, or I can hit the minus sign to make it just a little bit smaller. The minus sign will make things small, the title smaller. The plus sign will make the font size larger. So you have to be careful. That's how you can kind of change whether or not there's room for it on room for what you're writing. Once again, we don't write in complete sentences usually on titles. We write in more phrases. We always want to capitalize the beginning. We're trying to get information up that they really need to know or that is fun to know or that highlights a student that we want to kind of say yay you on. Um, so that in headline usually tells the topic. I'm going to hit the X to get out of it, and that gets us back to our regular thing. So I've told you how to play the music, okay, by using the audio and then playing it on the three. Um, I've showed you how to bring titles up and take them off. And I've also shown you how to stop and start a recording. Okay. Also, a couple other things I want to point out to you. If you look over here, you can see this is the actual sound that is going on. Each one of these inputs has a sound channel with it. What you want to check is to make sure there is sound going. As I'm talking, you can see how the master is jumping up and down. If this master is ever blank, it means either that the soundboard has been completely muted which does happen from time to time, or we don't have a connection to the soundboard. So you always wanna make sure that we do have sound before we start playing.
Now, to play a video, if you have a video in here, I'm going to move this up here just so we can get to. If there's a video you're going to play, just like this on, if we, um, you always want to make sure it starts at the beginning. I can click on it, make sure it starts at the beginning. You can actually start a video somewhere else if there's a reason why you only want to show part of a video. We don't usually do that. We usually just make sure that it's starting at the beginning. But you do, before we start recording, you need to make sure it starts at the beginning. Then to play the video, what we do is we hit quick play right here. See quick play? And when I hit quick play, it will automatically start the video in the screen that's recording. The screen that is recording is the one that's on the green up on this side. Um, and then it pushes the last thing you did over onto the left. When you finish, you can get to the end of your video and it starts to get to the end. To get back to the screen, you're going to flip this, which is kind of a toggle that flips it back to the other side and that brings my um, my announcer back up. You can actually put anyone, any of these on preview. This is kind of a preview screen. This is a recording screen. By putting anything, let's say I had a picture of snow, I could click the center of the picture of the snow and it brings it up on the standby. It's not usually necessary to do that, but you can do that. Um, also, let me, we talked earlier today about the possibility of changing out the background uh, and bringing up our the front of the school. I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to double click on the front of the school and see what's going on with this picture. I can position it. Uh, I could position it to be a little bit smaller so that people show up in front of it a little bit better. I think that what that will do is turn the background around it black, which for our purposes may not be that bad. Then to actually change the background, I'm going to go to setup right here. And then from um, the layers, the layer, we're basically using back, um, background layer and layer one. So we get the background and I can go down here to input and I can go to WMS and that automatically changed. Now the background is WMS. Now, caution, you have to get out of setup and back to camera, or the first time you flip this, it goes back to black. So you lose your background if you don't lock it in by putting it back on camera. Now, another couple of things that are very important. Oftentimes we will take, um, when we're setting things up, we will take things off of my flash drive. I things on a flash drive that we want to have come up on the screen. To do that, I'm going down here to this little file folder, click the file folder, and um, my flash drive right now is 1819. Sometimes it does say announcements. This one's from a couple of years ago. But any of the flash drives I put in, I've got into the habit of always having a folder that says media for today. I do that so that we can separate anything that's on my flash drive, which might have dozens or even hundreds of similar items, to something that we need to import right now. So I always put stuff when I'm loading the flash drive into the media for today file. So I put that in. And if it is a JPEG, like this one says JPEG, that's a picture. So I would click on the picture and drag it to pictures. Now this one has already been imported, so I get this, so I'm just gonna get out of it. I don't need to do that. Um, or if it's a movie, which is a .mov file, or a .mp4 file, both of those are movies, I would click on the movie and then drag that movie, click on it and drag it to um, movies or videos to load it in. Again, I've already loaded this one in, so it's popping up with this. So I'm just going to hit skip and it'll go away. All right. Um, then I can close out of the file folder and anything I want to input then into one of these boxes to bring up for a day, I go to add input. And on this, I've got lots of options. It defaults to video. That is the most common thing we add input for. So it defaults to a video file. However, look, I can pull up a straight, another camera. 
something that doesn't go through what we do. We don't have any of those, but it's possible to pull that up. That's how we uploaded the cameras that we do have. Um, I could do a single image. And if you'll notice, I brought up a lot of those in the past. I could also do, you notice these got several that are stacked photos. So photos, this is multiple photos. So let's say the art department sends me three pieces of artwork to pull up for their announcement. I'm, I'll put those in a file folder and the file folder then would be imported into um, photos. And then I will pull up the actual file folder We'll come back to this one in a second. The titles, so if we lose titles or we need to add titles, this is how we would get it. These are straight titles. We also sometimes use a ticker. Here's a ticker one up here. If I click that, we've got a couple of tickers. I usually use this one because it's bigger at the bottom. This one's tinier, and this allows us to put multiple names. So if we have students of the month and we've got like 10 names to pull up, we'll use a ticker. That's how we use those. Um, the virtual set is how I've brought up the blank screen that we're currently using. And sometimes we will use a web browser so I can put an actual YouTube video in here and play something directly off of YouTube. We're going to go to photos now because we haven't used that yet and go to browse. That will take me over here and those photos are going to be in pictures, right? But this is looking for folders of pictures, not individual pictures, but folders of pictures. So for our purposes today, let's go to 9-11 because I know that there's something in that. So I would click that folder and select the folder. Once again, I get to this screen and I'm going to hit OK. It always puts the newest folder at the very bottom. Then we're always going to have to bring it up. So I'm going to click the center, drag it up, and I usually have to drag them up like one or two at a time. So I'm going to put this over here. And what happens with this is we play this on a quick play because it runs kind of like other videos or audio. It's going to go in a loop playing one after another without me having to do anything. So I'm going to hit quick play and it's going to automatically go through the four pictures that are in here from 9-11 and I've got it set on a loop so it'll take it back to the beginning and keep playing them over and over again. Now I'm going to get out of that now um, by hitting swiping across. Now if I want to change the speed of how quickly they're changing, what I can do is double click on it. Um, I was wrong. It's not a double click. It's a right click on it and go to slideshow settings. This is the same thing you would use for the ticker. Sign show settings. I'm going to click on that. And one of my options is how quickly they change. So the um, transition every two seconds, or I could go maybe every five seconds. So I'm going to click on that. Now when I hit quick play, notice how much slower it will take for them to go from one to another. They will still change, but it takes it longer time to go through it. So that's how those work. Um, I'm gonna get back out of that by swiping over. And then um, I think I've shown you most of it. It's a matter of clicking as we go, recording, and that is the mysteries of, oh, when we get to the end of the day, we always want to save the last thing that we did. So you go up here to save and go down to announcements, vMix presets, and you're going to save over top of the one that we just had. Hit yes. Once you've done that, this locks in this for the day because we usually do, um, we want, don't want to start over. We want to start with stuff already on. We've got a lot of titles. Some of them have things that we use every time or use often. We already have the background in there the way we want it. The cameras are set up the way we want it. The intro music is set up the way we want it. All of those things we are preserving. At that point, you can exit out by hitting the X out here. Let me point one other thing out. This, um, I'll hit yes. Okay, the other thing that you need to be careful with is this mouse actually can sometimes disappear. And the reason it's disappearing is there is another screen out over on this side um, 
that is linked to this. It's kind of, it's, um, there's two screens connected to this computer. And as a result, what's happening is that you lose it off on the side. So anytime you lose it, just bring notice that it went over to the right and you just need to bring it back in the middle. 